Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. So guys, the March patch is about to drop and I thought we could briefly go over what changes you can expect when you log on. So you'll have a good idea on what to expect when you log in. There are a lot of changes in this one, so let's just get into it. So I guess we will start on the biggest thing coming in this patch, and that of course is the Tempest Heart Expedition. This is of course a 5 man expedition with a recommended item level of 550 to 570. It was very challenging on the PTR, but I think this was mostly due to the fact that the PTR gear we get rolled out of the chest is not ideal. When you're wearing your proper gear and your weapons on live, I don't think this expedition will be nearly as challenging as it was. Some cool things are coming along with this expedition. For one, every boss in here will be guaranteed to give you a bump in your expertise, which will be great for those fresh 60s out there, or people trying to level their blunderbuss. But not only that, there is a new daily you can find outside the expedition that will reward you with an additional gypsum orb and a crate. This is a unique crate, because it will also offer a chance at an expertise bump and some really nice rewards. This daily you will get from an NPC in the chapel named Mara Rosa. I am pretty excited that they are adding dailies. I hope this is something they continue with in additional future patches. You will also find a new chapter to the main story, which will reward you with a free orb for the new expedition. This quest chain will pick up in Mountain Home Outpost in the Shattered Mountain. The next big thing is of course the blunderbusses now on live. This is an amazing weapon, so amazing that they had to do a couple passes on it on the PTR. It was just too overpowered. Let's hope they didn't make it too weak, or leave it too overpowered, but really whatever. Much like the Void Gauntlet, I am sure it will get worked out over time. This will of course be crafted at the engineering bench like the bow and the musket, so keep an eye out for some amazing crafted ones turning up on your markets. Along with this weapon, we of course have a new quest line to go with it. You will find this quest in Evanscale Reach, and it is pretty standard, like all the rest of the legendary quests. There was a bit of an issue with the gear score of the reward you got, but that got sorted out in the last round of the PTR, and now it is on par with the rest of the legendary weapons. If you are unable to craft one for yourself, I definitely recommend doing this quest, because as you know, quest rewards do not get expertise squished, so it's a good thing to have while you work on getting your blunderbuss expertise leveled. They also added a bunch of new world events to the game with this patch. For all of you home decor enthusiasts, they have added Vista paintings. I created a video to each Vista location you will find in the link in the description, but for those of you who want to find them on your own, don't click that link. They added Stinky the Hunter to the swamps in Weaver's Fen, but you will only find him during the daytime in the game. He drops some amazing leveling gear for your level 30 to 40 players. In the Great Cleave, they added some of the Winter Convergence Yetis. These are kind of cool. They are there for characters 45 to 55, and they drop every named world drop. But these rewards will not be any good for you to upgrade or anything because their gear score will be too low, but will work as an amazing boost to twink out your level 45 to greatly improve their leveling experience and of course break up some of the boring leveling process. They also added some unique roadside encounters to Weaver's Fen and Restless Shore. Again, a great source of loot for your alts or those still leveling. They have completely revamped the entire experience players will have in Cutlass Keys on Unbound Island, adding more treasure to Benjamin Boatswain. They also revamped the layout to Andromedus in Weaver's Fen, giving it a lot more of a dangerous vibe. And of course, Rafflebones, the loot collector. Rafflebones spawns in every zone and he is definitely worth your time to kill. You will know him because he will look like one of those exploding lost guys with the barrel on their back. And of course, he glows golden. When you engage him, either by attacking or getting too close to trigger aggro, he will flee, and he is very fast. You will have 45 seconds to kill him, or he will despawn and you will get nothing. But if you do kill him, he will drop a random named item, plus other randomly rolled gear. If you kill him in a 60 plus zone, he will drop 500 umbral shards, an obsidian gypsum, and a random named item. So he will definitely be worth your time to kill. Here are a few locations where I spotted him on the PTR. His spawns do appear to be static. I found him at these locations every time I checked them. They of course also added tier 4 houses to both Evanscale Reach and Reekwater. And if you are thinking of relocating, you will be happy to hear that they also changed house abandonment so that now it will give you 50% of your total purchase value when you abandon it, which will make the move a little less painful. Another cool change that I'm sure everyone will like is that they have added the ability to open your inventory and organize salvage or do whatever while running. Thank god this is something I have been dying to see. They also changed how things work a little well in combat. You will no longer be able to change equipment while in combat. Before you couldn't change it while your skills were on cooldown, but now it is while in combat across the board. They made a ton of changes to ammo also. First they removed flint arrows from the game. They did this because now, when you have no ammo slotted, you will still be able to fire your bow or your musket doing one times damage. 
Higher tier ammo will increase your damage multiplier just like before, but another nice change here is that ammo will now stack to 1000 instead of just 500, and it no longer has any weight, so no more will you be overburdened with ammo. They made a whole bunch of changes to weapons. To the bow, they fixed an issue where the bow status effects could not be extended via perks or other bonuses. For the fire staff, for burning, they updated the burning debuff applied by several fire staff abilities. They increased the damage tick rate from 1.5 seconds to 1 second. They decreased the maximum stacks from 10 to 5. They increased damage per stack from 3% weapon damage per tick to 6. They updated tooltips for all affected abilities. They fixed an issue that prevented players from interrupting repeated light attacks with a block. The burnout ability, this ability now ends early if the player traverses into deep water, so no more crossing lakes using burnout. The flamethrower ability, accelerating flamethrower at the item perk, fixed an issue where this perk did not properly scale its potency with gear score. For the great axe bloodlust, adjusted detection volume to prevent exploits between dueling players. For charge, this ability now ends early if the player traverses into deep water. For the hatchet, raging torrent, refreshing torrent item perk, fixed an issue where the final attack of Raging Torrent was not triggering the cooldown reduction from this perk. Energizing Fuel Rush item perk, fixed an issue where this perk would not apply the stamina gain on both hits of Fuel Rush. Fuel Rush now ends early if the player traverses into deep water. For the Ice Gauntlet, for Heavy Attack, fixed an issue where the Heavy Attack could be charged with insufficient mana, and a Light Attack could be performed at the end of the charge. The functionality has been changed so that attempting to charge without sufficient mana will instead trigger a light attack immediately. Fixed an issue that prevented players from interrupting repeated light attacks with a block. For Entombed, Healing Tomb Item Perk. Fixed an issue that prevented this perk from functioning properly if the player exited the tomb state by dodging. For Heavy Freeze, fixed a typo in the description. For Ice Spikes, fixed an issue where the Mighty Spikes visuals would not appear in some circumstances. For Wind Chill, fixed an issue where the ability could trigger the Defiant Freeze passive when cancelled. For Life Staff, the Orb of Protection fixed a text error with the tooltip that stated it healed for 10% damage when it actually healed for 8. The actual healing values were not changed however, only the text was corrected. The Sacred Protection fixed an issue which caused this passive to deal durability damage to the equipped weapon when swapped. Spirits United the Sacred Ground Blessed upgrade changed the name of this upgrade to be Anointed so as not to be confused with the item perk of the same name. Fixed an issue where this upgrade provided healing through Ice Gauntlet's Entombed ability. For basic attacks, light and heavy attacks can now be cancelled by self-targeting heals. Fixed an issue that allowed light attacks to fire at a faster rate while holding the block button. For Divine Embrace, fixed an issue where the channeling UI element did not match the actual casting time of the ability. For the Musket Shooter Stance, Fixed an issue where the shooter stance was increasing the meter for the censored mutator if the player entered and exited the stance without the ability going on cooldown. It will now only affect the meter after the first shot is fired while in shooter stance. For marksman, fixed an issue where this upgrade was not functioning properly. Back it up, fixed an issue where this passive was disabled while using sticky bomb. Critical reload, fixed an issue that caused the sound effects for this passive to play incorrectly. Improved reliability of hit counting. For Rapier Tondo, fixed an issue where using Evade to cancel Tondo could result in the damage being dealt without showing any visual effects. For Flurry, fixed an issue where this ability could not be cancelled using Fletch. For Fletch, this ability now ends early if the player traverses into deep water. For Momentum, fixed an issue where the visual effect for this passive would persist even if the Rapier was sheathed or swapped. For the Sword and Shield, for the leadership ability, fixed an issue which caused this passive to deal durability damage to equipped weapon when swapping. For leaping strike, this ability now ends early if the player traverses into deep water. For counterattack, fixed an issue that caused this ability to stop functioning and display zeros for all of its values. For the void gauntlet, heavy attack, fixed an issue where the heavy attack could be charged with insufficient mana and light attack would be performed at the end of the charge. The functionality has been changed so that attempting to charge without sufficient mana will trigger a light attack immediately. For the Warhammer, Path of Destiny, Stimulated Reduction, updated description to specify that the cooldown reduction only occurs on the first four enemies hit by the skill. Mighty Gavel, Justice for All, fixed an issue that caused the second hit to refresh the cooldown of the ability. For Outnumbered, fixed an issue that prevented this passive from functioning when its conditions were met. 
Another amazing change, guys, is that only equipped items lose durability now. Not everything in your bag, thank god. They have also removed player to player collision finally, so those zergs will feel a lot different without everyone getting tangled on top of one another. And guys, one of my favorite changes, they have doubled the storage of all your chests, and on top of that, all storage across all settlements is now linked. So now you can move things around freely, without a cost and no matter what faction owns the territory. This is a big one. Organizing and using items in storage is so much nicer now, without having to travel all over the place to find things. They have replaced the juniper berry bags with new ones containing a bunch of moats, coin, and diamond gypsum. You will now get these three times a day from harvesting logs, mining, stuff like that. And another really awesome change is to the boss arenas. They made them give much better loot crates now upon completion, with much higher expertise bump chances. But not only that, they also made the keys very cheap to craft. But that's not all. The keys now will also drop randomly as loot from elites in the areas surrounding the arenas. Which is awesome. We can now farm the keys from these elite mobs. Another thing some of you will be happy to hear is that they fixed an issue where player animations could break if they became encumbered while using weight reduction perks. They also reduced the occurrence of combat related stuttering and unresponsiveness when mixing light and heavy attacks. Which I know has been a horrible headache. There were a ton of changes in this patch, and I have only listed the big ones. They also have reworked a ton of visual effects, fixed pages of bugs. This really seems like an amazing patch. Let's just hope we don't log into another completely broken mess with 650 new bugs created. I really do have my fingers crossed. Okay guys, that's all the major stuff I wanted you to know about. I honestly think this patch might be one of the better ones. The reason I think that is unlike other PTRs when people notice something, like the blunderbuss being way overpowered, the rewards from quests not lining up correctly, or combat stuttering, they were fast to jump in this round and fix it while still in the PTR. What are you guys most excited about, or not excited about this patch? Please let me know in the comments. And as always guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.